All right, so here's our mass on a spring. Okay, you're going to release this at time equals zero, and this thing's going to oscillate back and forth between plus x max and minus x max. So we let this thing go. Okay, I go click, and it's going to go one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay, so remember this gives us our position of the block as a function of time. Okay, remember we said that the old equation number two, this whole business, okay, we can't use that because the acceleration is not constant. Okay, so you saw in the videos this thing speeds up and then it slows down, and then it speeds up and then it slows down, and it speeds up and slows down. So acceleration is not constant. So that's our position as a function of time. Okay, remember, and that thing is called the amplitude. So in this example over here, okay, let's say this is six centimeters, okay? So that means if I try to graph it, it starts at the high point at the amplitude, okay? And then it goes, passes through the zero point, all right? So that's a cosine function. So if I wrote that and that form, all right, then that number there, our amplitude is our six centimeters, okay? So this function here describes that mass oscillating on a spring. Okay, all right, so this term here, right, we said that was called our angular frequency, all right, and I, I, I said that it was related to the angular speed, omega, from the previous chapter, all right, and the way to see that is, in the previous chapter, I had, let's say, um, a ball at the rim of a wheel, okay, or maybe a bug going around a wheel, okay, and again, this could also be a person, okay, walking around a circular path, okay, so it doesn't have to be a wheel, okay? Just be a certain person walking around a circular path. Okay, so here's the ball going around the wheel. And we said that this thing had some angular speed, okay? Omega. Remember, omega was my angular displacement divided by the time over which that occurred. So if this thing goes around once, okay, the angle to go around once, okay? Remember, we don't say 360. We say 2 pi radians. Okay, so the angle to go around once for one revolution is two pi radians. Okay, the time to go around once, that time is called the period. So that angular speed, all right, from uh, the last chapter or from previous chapter was two pi radians over the period. Okay, so now we're going to call it the angular frequency. All right, and think of it like this. If I take a light and I'll, I'll show you a video, I'm going to take a light. Okay, I'm going to shine it on this ball that's on the rim that's going around the wheel. And if I look at the shadow of this thing on the wall, instead of seeing the ball moving in a circle, okay, we saw a video on how circular motion is related to sinusoidal motion. But if you look at the shadow of the ball going in a circle, okay, the shadow doesn't look like it's going in the circle. The shadow looks like it's oscillating up and down like a mass on a spring. So the shadow looks like it's in simple harmonic motion with some frequency or angular frequency omega. Okay, so the angular speed omega of the ball from the previous chapter, okay, how many radians does it go around per time, okay, is now associated with the angular frequency, meaning how frequent, okay, angularly, okay, how frequent does this thing oscillate back and forth. So I'll show you that video to make the connection between circular motion, okay, the angular speed omega, and oscillatory motion, the angular frequency omega. So the angular frequency, okay, omega, is related to the period via this expression. Okay, so omega is 2 pi over the period. Okay, remember the units of omega. Okay, because remember, omega is angular displacement per time. So the upper unit is in radians. Okay, some number in radians. And the bottom unit is time in seconds. Okay, so let's say I have an oscillating system. Okay, down here, oscillating system. And I'm going to describe the, the position as a function of time using this expression. Okay, so the amplitude is 5 centimeters. So that means I stretched it back, whoops, stretched it, stretched it back 5 centimeters, and I let it go at time equals zero. So this expression has this form, okay? So there's our amplitude, okay? Amplitude is five centimeters, all right? So you can recognize that. That thing in front 
is the amplitude. That's our five centimeters, okay? This thing here, that's the angular frequency omega. Okay, so the thing right next to the T in the cosine, that's our angular frequency omega. So omega, okay, that right there is two pi radians per second, okay? So once you have omega, okay, when you're doing these problems in the chapter, okay, if you have omega, you have the period, okay? Mean, or if you have, if you have omega, you know the period because omega is two pi over the period, okay? So solve this for T, okay? Just do the algebra, okay? Solve this for T. So the period, right? So I said omega is two pi over the period. Multiply both sides by the period. So on the left, I have period omega is two pi. And now and then divide both sides by omega. That's what I have right there. So the period is two pi over omega, okay? So omega, right there, omega is my two pi radians per second. So the twos cancel, the pi's cancel, okay? All right. Seconds come up on top, okay, what happens to that radian? Okay, remember, it disappears, okay? So that radian on the bottom would have no context of being there because we know time, okay, doesn't have units of radians, okay? Just has units a second. Okay, so essentially, if you know omega, you can instantly find the period just by doing two pi over omega. Okay, so here's our oscillating system. Right, so I'm holding it here at point A, right, and I'm going to illustrate one period of oscillation. Okay, so I let it go at A, travels to point B. Okay, point B is the equilibrium position of the spring. Goes to C, stops, okay, turns around, passes the equilibrium point again, and then goes to point E where I let go. Okay, so I've showed one cycle or one period of the motion. All right. So if I graph it over here, okay, it starts at the amplitude. Okay, that would be my five centimeter mark. Okay, so this is point A, passes point B, goes to point C, comes back to point D, which is the x equals zero point, and then winds up at the point E where I let go. That's why that would be a cosine function. Okay, so again, this picture shows one cycle of the motion. All right, so I, I want to ask, at a time of one quarter of the period, which point up here, okay, which point is one quarter of the period, all right? Well, if this motion, A to E, is the period, then from A to, A to C, okay, that would be half the period. So from here to here, okay, from A to B, would be a quarter period. Okay, so a time equal quarter period, that's at point B. Okay, well, the period is a second. Okay, so then the time is a quarter of a second. So if I put in this function, okay, here's this function up here. If I put in time equal one quarter of a second, I did that right here. If I put in time equal one quarter of a second, okay, so the two and the four, okay, reduce to a half. All right, and the cosine of pi over two, do that on a calculator or from trig class, pi over two, that's your 90 degrees and cosine of 90 degrees is zero, okay? So that says at a quarter of the period, okay, that's at point B right there, okay, the X coordinate is zero. You're going through the relaxed position, okay? Now, if I ask at, okay, what about at half a period? Okay, at time equal half a period. What point up here, okay, is half a period? Well, if that's the whole period, then half a period is just out to point C, okay? So that's at point C, okay? So the period's one second, so half, half a period is half a second. So I'm going to put in right there, okay? I'm going to put in the time is half a second. So right there I put in my time is half a second. So the twos cancel. And I have the cosine, oh, I'm sorry, and the S's cancel, okay? So I have the cosine of pi, and technically, yeah, there is the word radian there, okay? But radian's dimension, so you don't have to write it. And whenever there's a pi, okay, and then the word radian, if there's a pi symbol there, then that word radian is implied to be there anyway, 
if it's an angular quantity. So you don't have to write the rate, you don't have to write the radian there. Okay, so remember pi is 180 degrees and hundred and cosine of 180 degrees is minus one. Okay, so this whole thing is minus one. Okay, so that tells me that half a period, you're at minus five. So sure enough, I look at the picture at half a period from there to there, okay, from A to C, minus five means you're over here at the other side of the amplitude. Okay, so here it asks, what's the total distance that the block travels in one period, okay? So you let go of it here, and it goes, that's one period, okay? Okay, that's one cycle. Okay, so what's the total distance traveled? Well, the amplitude is five centimeters, so there's your five centimeters, okay? So in one period, the distance it goes is five, 10, 15, 20. So 20 centimeters. Okay, so here's a picture where I have similar case where I'm gonna let, let something go here. Okay, now above, it just went back and forth, okay? Here, I'm gonna have it complete two cycles in one second. So it's gonna go one, two. Okay, so it's gonna go one, two. Back and forth twice in a second, okay? What's the period? Right. Well, the period is a time to complete one cycle, one, two. Okay. If it goes if it goes two times in a second, then the period is half a second. And, I, and I'm going to write the word second. Okay. So it goes two times in one second. Then the time it took to go once is half a second. Okay. Now here's a new quantity. Okay. Little f is called the frequency. Okay, so we haven't really used that term at all. Okay, so f is the frequency, and the, frequ the frequency is defined as 1 over the period. So the frequency is 1 over capital T. Okay, so up above, the period was half a second. Okay, so we're going to calculate the frequency. Okay, so I'm going to put a half a second on the bottom, okay, the two comes up to the top, my second is still on the bottom, okay, so the frequency f is two, two per second, okay, well two what per second? Well, it's two of them per second, well two of what, okay, it was two cycles per second, okay, so, so, that's what the two represents. There was two things that occurred per second. Okay, two what? Two cycles per second. So the unit of frequency is cycles per second. Okay, and in our SI system of units, a cycle per second, okay, is named a hertz. Okay, named after the famous Italian physicist Heinrich Hertz. Okay, and then we can abbreviate, I don't think he was Italian. Okay, and then we can abbreviate a hertz with eight with eight Z. Okay. So the units of frequency is a Hertz. Okay. And if you have a computer, right. And you look at your, your clock speeds, right. Things are always in Hertz. All right. Okay. So, okay. So, so here's, here's the thing I have to be careful of in these chapters. If the book says the word frequency, okay. Frequency means F that's the frequency. Okay. You can't point at Omega and call that frequency. Okay. Omega is the angular frequency. All right, so if I look at this, okay, so omega, remember, is 2 pi over the period, okay, 2 pi times 1 over the period, okay, but 1 over the period is the frequency, so omega, okay, the angular frequency is 2 pi times the frequency, okay, so in the example we did above, okay, the frequency f was two hertz, but I'm not gonna write hertz, I'm gonna write cycles, okay, per second, okay? And actually, instead of writing the word cycles, okay, I'm gonna write it like this. Okay, so instead of writing the word cycles, okay, when I write the frequency, this whole thing is F, okay, when I write the frequency, it's two per second, right? How frequent did this thing go back and forth? Okay, that's what F is. How 
frequent did it go back and forth? It went twice, there's the twice, per second. Okay, so that's why I don't need to write the word cycles. Okay, okay so if I look at the units I'm left with, okay, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, I have a seconds on the bottom. What am I left with on the top? Okay, well, okay, remember omega was 2 pi over the period. Okay, but the definition of omega was your angular displacement divided by your time. So the stuff on the top, that delta theta, that has units of radians. Okay, that 2 pi, okay, not degrees, okay, has units of radians. Okay, so there's always a radian sitting there. There's always a radian sitting there. So our answer has units of radians per second. Okay, so, so the angular frequency omega is related to the frequency f via that 2 pi. All right, we mentioned before that we couldn't use equation number two from the earlier chapter for the car going down the road because the acceleration wasn't constant, okay? And then we came up, okay, we built the position as a function of time that had that form. It's, it's sinusoidal in nature, okay? Now we want to be able to find, okay, an expression that gives us the velocity of the block as a function of time, okay? And we're not going to be able to use number one, okay, from the previous chapter, previous chapters, because the acceleration is not constant. Okay, so this gives us the position as a function of time, and now we're going to be able to find the velocity as a function of time. So what I did is I have our mass and spring system. Okay, so I'm going to let go at time equals zero. This thing's going to um, do one cycle, so it's going to start at A, and then come back to that point. Okay, it's going to go from A, B, C, D, to E. Okay. So I drew it again here, but I took out the spring, okay, so we can see what's going on. So it starts at A, okay, at rest, okay. It's headed to the left, so the velocity is negative, okay. So remember, when we draw these pictures, this is x equals zero, okay. This is some positive x, and that's some minus, or positive x max, that's minus x max. So it's just like a regular number line, positive to the right. So it starts here at A, okay. It's headed to the left. Okay, so the velocity is negative, headed to the left, okay, and then, well, we, it, then it's going to, um, well, it's speeding up from A to B, and that slams on the brakes, so it stops at C, turns around, speeds up on the way to D, slams on the brakes, still headed to the right, and it stops it at point E. So the velocity is negative for the first half, okay, then it turns around, and the velocity is positive for the second half of the cycle. Okay, so this is one period or one cycle that I've drawn. Okay, and we already know the shape of it looks like this. Okay, that's the position as a cosine. So I let go at time equals zero, okay, right there. So it starts at A, okay, passes through B, goes all the way to the left, turns around, and then goes through B again, which is letter D, and then winds up back where my hand let go. So that's the cosine. Okay, and then what I did is I broke these up into quarter periods. So each of these is a quarter of a period. Okay, all right, now I got to figure out the velocity as a function of time. All right, well, if I look from A to B, okay, velocity is, uh, well, velocity starts out at rest, and I let go, okay, so the velocity has to start at zero, and then it's negative because it's headed to the left. So the velocity is negative, all right? And then it goes to point B, and then it's still negative, okay? Because it headed to the left, but then it has to stop at C. So how can the velocity start out at A at zero, and then wind up at C, okay, at zero, and negative the whole time? So it has this form, okay? So it's getting, it's getting bigger, because the velocity is increasing, okay? But it's a negative number, so it's getting bigger. Okay, gets down to the gets down to point B, so that's the most negative it can be, and then it slams on the brakes and the velocity winds its way back to zero. Okay, so it has that shape. Right, and then after it turns around at C, okay, velocity now becomes positive. So here the velocity has now become positive right there. Okay, and at D, 
okay? It reaches point D, velocity is still positive, okay? So here's point D, velocity is still positive, all right? But eventually comes back to rest at point E. So it's, so it's at rest at point C, and it's at rest when it reaches point E. So it's rest at C, and it's at rest at E. So it's, and it's positive the whole time, okay? So that's the form, okay? It looks like this function, all right? And we have to figure out, okay, well, what is that function? Remember the sign, okay? The sign looks like that. The sign starts at a zero, okay? But the sine hump, the first one's up, okay, second one's below. Here, this one's below, and that one's positive, okay? So essentially, the velocity curve is an inverted sine. It's a sine multiplied by minus 1. So there's the sine, okay, and there's my minus 1, all right? Now, what is that thing? What is this thing, okay? Well, just like position, you have a maximum position, well, the thing in front of here, that amplitude, that gives you a maximum velocity, okay? Now, how do we find that? Well, this thing's going back and forth, okay? You start here, it goes back and forth, back and forth, okay? And the velocity changes with time. So this velocity expression right here, that takes the place of number one from kinematics in chapter two. So back in, the, in chapter two, car goes down the road that tells you how fast it's going at a certain time. This is the exact same thing. It tells you the velocity at any, any later time, okay? Now, this thing in front, that amplitude, that V max, okay? If we look at this thing oscillating back and forth, okay? If we look at it oscillating back and forth, where is the velocity maximum? Well, here it's at rest and there it's at rest, okay? So it probably should be a maximum somewhere in between. Speeds up slams on the brakes, okay? So we're gonna guess it's probably a maximum right in the middle, okay? But let's see. So to find this V max, all right? So here is this object going back and forth, okay? Going back and forth, all right? So remember, we said that uh, simple harmonic motion was similar to circular motion, all right? So imagine if you had this block attached to a wheel and it's rotating around in a circle, okay? So this thing is, the block is rotating in a circle with some angular speed omega, okay? And if I had a light shining, so here if I have a big flashlight shining down, okay? We saw in the video that the shadow of this thing going back and forth on a wall here, okay? You'd see the shadow going back and forth like this. Okay, so the shadow is in simple harmonic motion, okay? So the speed of the ball, okay, the speed V of the ball is R omega, right? R is the radius, okay, out to the wheel, okay, the radius of the wheel. So the speed of the ball is constant. This thing is going around at constant speed, like that, okay, going around at constant speed. But the speed of the shadow is not constant, okay? Matter of fact, the shadow is at rest, okay, the shadow is at rest at the endpoints. Okay, so if you look at the shadow, okay, this, this speed here of the ball, okay, that V max, okay, or that speed of the ball, okay, well, that represents the fastest the shadow is moving. Well, where is the fastest, the sh where is the fastest place the shadow is moving? Well, it's right here when the ball is making its way at the bottom, okay, because when the ball is at that point, the left point, or the right point, okay, that's at C or A, the shadow's at rest, Okay, we saw that in that video, okay? So only when the ball is just passing at the bottom, okay, and also at the top, okay, when the shadow is passing through that point B, okay, that's when the speed is a maximum. Okay, where does that maximum speed come from? That just comes from the constant speed of the ball. So the speed of the shadow would be R omega, okay? So the maximum speed of the shadow would be R omega. Well, the shadow is the same as this thing going back and forth. So as this block goes back and forth, like that, it looks just like this shadow going back and forth, okay? It looks just like that shadow going back and forth, all right? So we know that the maximum speed of the shadow occurs at the bottom, okay? 
So that says the maximum speed of the block occurs right in the middle at that point B. Okay. Where does the block get its maximum speed? Well, for the maximum speed of the ball, which is r omega. Okay. But for the block going back and forth, okay, it's not a circle, right? There's no radius. Well, what plays the role of r? Well, if I match these up here, okay, match those up there, that radius is the same as the amplitude. Okay, so the amplitude now plays the role of the radius. So the maximum speed of the block going back, back and forth, okay, instead of r omega, it's x max omega. So this thing right here at v max, okay, that's x max omega. Okay, that's the maximum speed. All right. Now, so the velocity has this form. It's an inverted sign. Now we have to find the acceleration, and we'll see that the acceleration is not constant. Okay, so if we look at this this thing oscillating, going back and forth, okay, what through it goes, as it moves through one period, okay, so we let go at point A, and it's speeding up. So V is increasing as it goes from A to B, okay? Well, it's moving to the left, and the speed is increasing. We know from the first week, that if the speed is increasing, or if the velocity is increasing, the acceleration points in the same direction as the velocity. So from A to B, the velocity, the acceleration points to the left, but to the left is negative. So the acceleration, okay, has to start out negative. And indeed, right, okay, the acceleration, okay, I'm gonna start it out as negative, okay? Now, once it passes point B, okay, that's the relaxed position of the spring by definition. So that's where the spring has no force on it. There's no force on it, there's no acceleration. So the acceleration has to be zero at B. So that says it starts out as negative, right? That's a negative number. And at B, the acceleration is zero. Now it passes point B, okay? Still headed to the left, okay? Velocity is headed to the left, but now it's slowing down. So the speed is decreasing, it's putting on its brakes, okay? And we know that when the speed decreases, when the velocity decreases, the acceleration points opposite direction. So the acceleration is then positive from B to C. So you go to this picture, and sure enough, from B to C, that acceleration is positive. Okay. When it gets to point C, okay, it turns around. Velocity is increasing to the right. Okay. Velocity is increasing to the right. And we know if the velocity is increasing to the right, the acceleration is to the right, and the acceleration is then positive because it points to the right. So the acceleration stays positive, okay, from C to D. When it passes through B, that's the relaxed position of the spring. So at D, okay, which same as B, so at D, at point D, relaxed position of the spring, acceleration has to be zero there. So sure enough, acceleration zero. And then as it goes from D to E, okay, velocity still head, is headed to the right, but the speed is decreasing. I mean, velocity is decreasing. It's slamming on the brakes. So the acceleration points backwards, okay? So the acceleration then becomes negative, okay? So if I look at all of those situations, it started out down here negative, passed through the equilibrium position, the relaxed position, so this looks like a cosine, okay? Remember, cosine looks like this. Starts out high and then goes low. This starts out negative. So this would be a cosine, but I need a minus sign to invert it, to invert that, and then invert that hump, okay? So the acceleration goes as a negative cosine, okay? The thing in front, that's the amplitude. So the thing in front, the amplitude, that's A max, okay? So this is my A max, okay? What's the maximum acceleration? Okay, so we have to go back to this shadow business, okay? So if we go back to the shadow, go back to the shadow, okay? Well, what type of motion is this thing in? Well, this thing is in circular motion. So it has an acceleration toward the center, okay? And we know the centripetal acceleration for something going around in a circle, okay? is V squared over R, okay? So remember this whole circle business. This thing, the block is going back and forth. It's doing the exact same thing as the block, if it was on a circle, it's shadow, 
Okay, so remember, we made the connection between circular motion and simple harmonic motion. Okay, so in the circular motion chapter, okay, as this thing moves in a circle, the centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. Okay, but we know V is R omega. All right, so we knew this from the previous chapter. So one of the R's cancel, that gives me the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so what plays the role of R? Okay, the amplitude, X max. So here I have an R, I'm going to put in X max. So that's my amplitude. So I could write the acceleration is minus A max, and A max is X max omega squared times cosine of omega T. All right. So now this shows the acceleration is a function of time. So if you look back at the picture here, okay, if you look back at our picture, okay, the acceleration, it's speeding up, acceleration points that way. Slams on the brake, acceleration points that way. Turns around, acceleration still pointing to the right, and when it slams on the brakes here, acceleration points backwards. So the acceleration is changing. So that's why we can't use equation number one and equation number two and equation number three from chapter two is because they only hold for constant acceleration. This shows right here, acceleration is a function of time.